Opal Aqua. Available in a total of eight shades, the degree of translucency increases for vintage MP Opal Aqua Enamel Porcelain shade. There are additional shades such as Aqua T and Aqua SL. A simple two-layered buildup is all you will ever need to reflect the vitality and opalescence of natural teeth in metal ceramic restorations. Buildup of anterior crown with vintage MP Opal Aqua Porcelain. Step 1. Application of Vintage MP Base Opaque Step 2. Application of Vintage MP Shade Opaque Step 3. Buildup of Vintage MP Body Step 4. Buildup of Vintage MP Opal Aqua Enamel Step 5. Individual Characterization with Vintage Art Stains Vintage MP Base Opaque is an ultra-fine foundation paste that creates a strong bond to the metal frame while imparting a warm hue for highly aesthetic restorations. Stir the Base Opaque paste gently and thoroughly and dispense the required portion onto the mixing glass slab. It is important to clean and dry the porcelain brush to avoid excessive water and to sharpen brush tip for better control. Vintage MP Opaque liquid is added to adjust the viscosity of the Vintage MP Base Opaque as required. Dispense an adequate amount of Vintage MP Opaque liquid onto the glass slab. Dab the clean brush into the opaque liquid until it is soaked right through and remove excess liquid on a tissue paper. Ensure the metal surface is clean. Apply a thin and even layer of base opaque paste onto the coping. This layer of wash opaque forms a strong durable bond with the metal frame. Condense well with the Ceramosonic S condenser to ensure that the porcelain particles are densely packed to enhance the bond and minimize firing shrinkage to less than 5%. Ceramosonic S condenser displays ultrasonic vibrations of 28,000 Hz to enhance density of the porcelain. It comes with a touch sensor that automatically activates vibration when platform is contacted and has a choice of automatic 5 seconds or continuous 120 seconds vibration modes. Set the firing program for vintage MP base opaque in the porcelain furnace. Select the specific program and fire the Vintage MP Base Opaque layer. Once the firing cycle is complete, remove coping from the firing table and allow it to cool. Mix the Vintage MP Shade Opaque Paste A2O in the same way as Base Opaque to obtain a homogeneous mix. Dispense an adequate amount of shade opaque onto the glass slab. Apply a thin and uniform layer over the base opaque. Condense the paste opaque by gently tapping the metal coping. Reapply paste on the margins and other areas where the paste is insufficient until the metal is completely masked. Excess moisture can be eliminated by holding the coping briefly under the preheated muffle. Condense further with the Ceramosonic S condenser. Then place the coping on the firing tray and select the appropriate firing schedule. Remove the firing tray with the coping from the firing table and allow it to cool. Reapply the shade opaque paste only in areas where metal shows through and then fire again. Dispense an equal portion of AC and A2B porcelain powder onto the glass slab. Mix them together with an adequate amount of vintage mixing liquid HC.
In order to do a comparison between powder mixed with vintage mixing liquid HC and water, we will mix equal parts of the same powder with water too. Notice that the porcelain powder mixed with vintage MP mixing liquid HC is more stable, appears more cohesive and has a sheen, whereas the powder water mixture appears dull and tends to slump. Mixing porcelain powder shades A2B and AC results in a more natural cervical area. Vintage MP mixing liquid HC improves handling qualities of the porcelain, which remains moist for a longer time and also holds the powder particles together, enabling easy buildup. Scoop up the adequate amount of porcelain mixture with a clean brush and build up the cervical area. Condense with a brush shank. The cervical area should be fully condensed so as to minimize any shrinkage after firing. Set the porcelain furnace to cervical firing program and fire. Dispense an adequate amount of vintage MP A2B for the dentin layer. Mix the powder with vintage mixing liquid HC. Condense the porcelain mixture and absorb excess moisture with a tissue paper. Wet the contralateral tooth on the model either with water or vintage porcelain isolation liquid to prevent the adherence of porcelain to the model. Scoop the adequate amount of moist porcelain mixture onto the coping and build up the entire labial surface at just one go. A tissue paper held on the palatal side will absorb excess moisture from the porcelain mixture as you shape the dentin layer. This method of build-up avoids repeated addition and absorption of water, which incorporates air bubbles into and may also distort its form. Apply the body porcelain onto the palatal side and build up to its natural form. Smoothen the surface texture with a wet brush. Add more porcelain to the insufficient areas and condense. Correct the tooth form with the Lacron carver and gently tap the model with a small hammer to condense the porcelain mixture and to avoid the crown from deformation. Remove excess from the proximal, labial and cervical area with a porcelain knife. Smoothen the surfaces with a porcelain brush and condense sufficiently by tapping gently with a hammer on the side of the model. Now the body porcelain has to be cut back to allow sufficient space for the enamel layer. The tooth is built to the symmetry and dimension of the adjacent tooth. Check the restoration from various angles to ensure that it has the correct length, thickness, curvature and emergence profile. Divide the labial surface of the tooth into three parts. First, cut back at the incisal third, followed by a flat cut back at the middle third. Lastly, do a cutback in between the incisal third and middle third. Reproduce developmental grooves by cutting the shallow V-shaped grooves on both the mesial and distal sides at the incisal third.
On the proximal surface, cut back by one millimeter on both the mesial and distal sides to create space for the enamel layer. Flatten the brush tip and create finger-like structures at the incisal area to mimic the mamelon. Now the dentin layer is complete. The enamel layer is built up with the corresponding opalescent enamel porcelain. The newly developed vintage MP Opal Aqua Enamel is ideal for cases where higher translucency is required in the enamel layer, while maintaining the opalescence of natural dentition. In this case, to match the body porcelain A2B, the enamel layer is recreated with vintage MP Opal Aqua 58. Dispense an adequate amount of vintage MP Opal Aqua 58 and mix with Vintage Mixing Liquid HC. Build up for the final form of the tooth with Vintage MP Opal Aqua 58 porcelain by adding over the cutback areas. Care is taken not to distort the body porcelain, especially around the fragile mamelon areas. After completing the labial buildup, build up the proximal and palatal surfaces. Reduce the porcelain at the incisal edge, both labially and lingually, to obtain a sharp edge, as seen in natural dentine. Cover the sharp incisal edges with Vintage MP Opal Aqua 58 enamel porcelain. Remove the excess porcelain from the proximal surface before removing the crown from the model. Add body and enamel porcelain to insufficient areas, especially at the contact and cervical areas. Remove any excess moisture with a tissue paper. Then check and clean the internal fitting surface of the crown with a small dry brush. Carefully condense the crown on the Ceramosonic S condenser and remove the excess moisture. The build-up is complete. Select the appropriate firing program and fire the crown. Anatomical contouring is an essential step where all the fine surface details are recreated. The Ceramic Technique System Kit is designed with a detailed selection of abrasives for finishing and polishing both the metal and porcelain surfaces of a porcelain fused to metal restoration. A handy tool for beginners as well as experienced ceramists. Place the crown back on the model and check proximal contacts with an articulating paper. Adjust interproximal contacts with Dura Green Stone WH6. Recheck contacts with articulating paper. Trim off remaining tight spots with the Dura Green Stone WH6. 
Ensure that the crown is seated properly in the die. Adjust the labial and the palatal surfaces with Dura Greenstone WH6. Shape the palatal fossa with Dura Greenstone IC3, which is easy to adapt into the concavity. Dura Greenstones are available in a variety of shapes to adapt to different surfaces of the tooth. Contour the developmental grooves with Dura Greenstone TC4 and define the fine details on the crown with Dura Greenstone TC1. Further enhance the characteristics such as the pericomata and the mamelons on the crown surface with a fine diamond point HP. Use the same point to adjust the palatal surface. After contouring of restoration, do the fine finishing of the whole crown with an impregnated silicone polisher soft cut PA. Vintage art fluorescent porcelain stains have been specially created for easy reproduction of individual characterizations and modification of shades with all existing high-fusing PFM porcelain systems, alumina or zirconia porcelain, with various core materials, that is, alumina or zirconia, CAD-CAM porcelain blocks, pressed ceramics and artificial porcelain teeth. Rinse the crown before staining. Dispense a few drops of vintage art stain liquid onto the glass slab and apply a thin layer on the crown surface. Use the shade guide to compare the shade of the final restoration. Vintage art stain can be applied to further enhance the tooth color. If staining is necessary for the cervical area, use orange stain. Apply brown or orange-brown in the proximal area. Finally, glaze and fire the stained restoration. Notice the natural gloss and translucency at the incisal edge of the completed crown.